Widgets are small parts of applications that allow user input. We're going to build some uh, Python widgets through the IPython notebook. And we're going to do that, first of all, with importing these two things. So let's just first of all go to uh, open up a Python notebook. And then we're going to start with these two commands. And I'll show you a couple examples of how to build some of these widgets. So just start up the Jupyter Notebook. And if you don't have Jupyter Notebook installed, just go to try.ipython or try.jupyter.org and uh, use a, uh, a web version of IPython. Okay, so this is going to start up. And once it starts up, it'll bring up a web page. And then we'll start um, with a new and a new Python notebook. This is Python 3. Okay, so I'm going to put it uh, right over here. And uh, let's just start with this, um, just first of all, importing the uh, widgets. Okay, so ipy uh, widgets as wg. And then you also need to import uh, this ipython um, display. Um, and I'll do that as a from. Okay, so we have these two right here. And uh, what we'll do first of all is just go ahead and create a field for a name. Okay, and input a name from the widgets.txt. And we'll want to query a value. We'll put a default value in there as first just to uh, ask the user. Okay, we'll display that. And then we can type something in there. Okay, my name is John. And but, but let's say we also want to input something else. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and input uh, maybe an age. And maybe uh, we want it to be a number and, and just have an integer slider bar. Okay, so these are just two examples of um, different widgets that we can use. And I'll just put age. And then I'll display the name and the age. Okay, so let's say I'll change that to John, and I'll put my age. There you go. Uh, okay, so now that I have my age and my name, um, maybe I want to do something with that uh, later on. So let's come over here, and uh, I reran that one again, so it reset the values. Uh, but let's go ahead and just have a display of something here on the next line where we're going to print um, we'll do name dot value uh, is okay and then we'll do age dot value so you access those with the dot value um, properties of those uh, the structures that are created when you create the text in, in slider um, and then we'll do uh, years old. Okay, now it's going to return an error when I do this uh, because it's going to say you're mixing types. Uh, so we need to convert that age.value to a string. Okay, so just put a string there. And uh, if I update this now, okay, and let me go to this and then run the next line. Then it inputs those values and then when I've run it next then it shows the correct uh, values there okay now let's go on to do something just a little bit more advanced um, but sometimes we want to link the different elements of our widgets and so I'm just going to create a new uh, this one will be a float text okay and then another one that's going to be a, a float slider Okay, and let's display both of those. Okay, so let's say I have this slider going, but I want that value to also show up in the float text. Then I can link these two together with a, um, I'm going to create a new link, and I'll do a JavaScript link, and I'll link the value of one to the value of the other. 
Okay, so when I run this again, now when I change it, you can see that they are linked and they are uh, synchronized. Okay, let's go on to another example. Uh, this one's going to be a plot. So we want to create an interactive plot. Um, in this case, uh, let's go ahead and create our new plot just by, you know, uh, a function. Okay, so we'll have uh, define my plot, and we'll make that dependent on a parameter C. Um, let's go ahead and before we do this, let's import uh, NumPy as NP. Uh, we'll need that here just to do a lin space between a linearly spaced values between negative 5 and 5. We'll put 20 points there. And then we'll say that y is equal to c times x squared. So we're just going to have a parabola there. And we want to see um, it update as the uh, c value changes. And then let's go ahead and also import. Um, we'll do mat plot lib uh, inline and then import um, let's see we'll do a from map plot lib dot pi plot uh, here I'll do import instead as plt okay so now we can plot and so let's do our plot with an x and y value and we'll do a red dashed line Let's do a couple other things with this plot as well. Let's just create a Y label and make that Y of X. And then also an X label. And I'll just name that X. Okay, you may want to also put in some things like um, Y limit. And I'll just go 0 to 80. And an X limit as well. I'll go negative 5 to 5. So our x values are going to go from negative 5 to 5. We just restricted that there. And then y limit just to keep that uh, constant. OK, so now let's go ahead and just run this. It's just going to create this uh, new function. And let's see. Oh, I messed up my pi plot. OK, there it is. Uh, just had to correct the matplotlib.pi plot. Okay, now uh, if I just run this function, so if I just do my plot and uh, let's say there's 10, it's going to create this plot. But let's say I want to update the value of C, and now I can use a widget to do that and then be able to uh, show uh, the updated plot. So I'm going to just create a C slider. Uh, this is just going to be a new variable that's going to be equal to the float slider in the widget library. And I'll give it an initial value of 1 with a minimum value of 0, a max value of 3. And I can even put a step in there, how frequently it updates. And then um, you know I can also put a description in there. But let's just end it here, because I think that's probably long enough. OK, so now we have a slider. And let's do interact. OK, so now we're going to have our function, which is my plot. And we want it to interact with this slider. And we're going to get the C value from C slide. OK, so now we have this same plot. Um, and let me just update this. And you can see that as I update it, the plot updates as well. OK, so you can see there the uh, plot updating. As I move it back and forth, uh, you can see it interacting with this uh, pi plot function that I created to be able to dis display y um, equals c times x squared. OK, so there's a, an interactive plot. Um, sometimes you want to see what are all the options. I showed you a couple with that c slide. Uh, there's some default options, but there might be others that you want to change as well. So if you come down and just say, you know, after you've defined C slide, you can do C slide dot keys. That will show you all the things that you can change about C slide. Okay, quite a big list there. Let's just go on down to another one. Let's say you don't know what kind of widget you want, but you want to see all the different uh, types of widgets that are available. 
So you can also do um, widgets dot, uh, let's see, widget types. And then when you run that, oh, uh, let's see, it's just widget. Okay, so here are all the different types of widgets that you can include um, with, with this current version of the IPython widgets package. Okay, so uh, let me, let's just do one other one. Um, let's say we want to do, uh, let's see, int, let's do int progress. Let's do this one right uh, here. Okay, we'll just do a progress bar. Like let's say you see something that's downloading and you say, hey, I want to put something like that in my, or progress in terms of how long the calculation is going to take. So I'll import time. Um, Let's have a new progress bar. I'm going to call that progress and we'll do an int progress and let's give it a description. Um, we'll just say that's loading. Okay, and then uh, you can also change other things about this progress bar. Um, but uh, let's also do one thing where we're going to change one of the properties later um, and We'll do orientation. And so by default, that is horizontal. We'll change it to uh, vertical later, just to show how we can change that. Okay, now let's, uh, let's just do our progress. Um, we'll display our progress. And then uh, let's just create a new for loop. Um, for I in range, we'll just go 100 steps here. And on every step, what we'll do is we'll just update the value of progress. Okay, progress.value equals I. And then uh, we'll also do a time.sleep 0.1. So it doesn't go too fast, but we can see it. Okay, so there we have the loading progress bar that we created with this interactive, this uh, integer uh, progress bar, this um, interactive progress bar. And we had horizontal, but let's change that to vertical now. Let's see how this changes. So we're going to change this after we've created the progress bar. We can change some of the properties of that, some of the keys. And uh, let's go ahead and do this now. You can see now it has a vertical loading bar. Okay, so that uh, concludes this tutorial on widgets. You can use widgets to input uh, data into an application, make it very interactive. Uh, you could publish this as a web form, for example, and then be able to collect data stored in a database. Uh, in general, though, it makes a very nice interactive application that can quickly create a web page and allow user input.